it's online now. Okay, okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, we are from Test Pump here, and this is the second episode of our two-part series on Lebanon-Israel maritime dispute and peace negotiations. My name is Suha Chubukcholo. I'm the Middle East liaison uh, at Test Pump, based here in Istanbul. Uh, Istanbul, Turkey. Um, uh, last week we had uh, two guests from uh, Haifa University, Israel, Dr. Horev and Dr. Spiner, to join us and present their views on the issue from the Israeli perspective. Uh, this week we go to the other side of the border and speak with the uh, Lebanese experts. Uh, we have two distinguished guests with us today. Uh, let me start, ladies, first with uh, introducing Lori Haitaya. Uh, Lori, uh, Lori is an energy expert based in Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, she's the Middle East and North Africa Director for Natural Resource Governance Institute. In her previous roles, uh, Lori was in charge of grassroots projects from fighting against corruption to agricultural cooperation, focusing mainly on civil society democracy campaigns in Lebanon and Iraq. She received gold distinction and excellence award by the Arab Women Council in 2014 for her role in promoting social responsibility. Lori is a media commentator and she gave interviews to various TV channels, published articles about energy geopolitics and maritime law in the Eastern Mediterranean. So welcome Lori once again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, um, thank you for the invitation. Most welcome. Uh, we have next with us, uh, Mr. Nadim Shahadi. Uh, now Nadim, uh, Nadim is a leading Lebanese-American scholar on Middle East North Africa affairs based in New York. Um, but uh, I actually known Nadim from uh, his time at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy when he was the director of the Paris Center for Eastern Mediterranean Studies. Um, we have not actually uh, encountered during my studies there, but uh, I followed your activities uh, while in the school, Nadim. So welcome. Um, Nadim, uh, is currently the director of uh, Lebanese American University's New York headquarters and academic center, and an associate fellow at Chatham House, where he was formerly the head of Middle East program. Um, as mentioned previously, Nedim uh, was the director of the Fares Center for East Med Studies at the Fletcher School. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome. Uh, and Osan, last but not least, our um, President at TESPAM, Turkish Energy Strategies and Politics Research Center in Ankara. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Nice, All right. uh, nice meeting with you. And, uh... yeah, yeah, we can start. Uh, okay. We can start. Okay. So, after this brief round of introduction, let us start. Um, Lori, I'd like to uh, come to you first. Since you are an expert on energy, geopolitics, and maritime issues, uh, legal matters on the current state of the uh, negotiations between Israel and Lebanon. Uh, could you please provide an overview of the maritime dispute between Israel and Lebanon? What issues are on the table and what are respective positions of each side? So uh, um, thank you to... for the invitation. Yes, I'm going to, uh, to share my screen. So I do have a presentation to share with you. Okay. So can everyone see the presentation? I think now. Uh, yes, yes, we can. Okay, perfect. And uh, hopefully the connection will be uh, good enough because it's uh, raining heavily in Beirut. So it affects the connection. So please let me know when I freeze or I don't. you don't hear me. So uh, basically, uh, what I'll try. To, so basically, what I'll try to do within within this fifteen to uh, twenty minutes is to do an overview of uh, what's at stake currently with the negotiations between Lebanon and uh, and uh, uh, Israel. So let me uh, share. So let me start. Uh, perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to discuss is very briefly on the Lebanon oil and gas sector today, uh, and then uh, the launch of the indirect negotiations between Lebanon and Israel, and what that entails, and what are at stake now, uh, and what is on the table. So, and I put them in the in the, just like a frame of battles, different battles that are being uh, 
uh, fought within the uh, negotiations. So the first one will be about the battle over the narratives. And the second, it's about the uh, battle over the rocks and the lines and the, and the maps. And for, uh, lastly, the battle over the resources, because at the end of the day, this whole maritime border issue is about uh, resources and Lebanon and Israel being able to um, uh, maximize and optimize the resources, the potential resources in that region. So first of all, let me go over the uh, Lebanon oil and gas sector. So since 2010, when the Lebanon ratified the offshore pe uh, petroleum resources law, uh, it started building uh, its uh, oil and gas sector. So uh, briefly, and not to go into a lot of details, the uh, offshore Lebanon has been divided to 10 blocks, like you see in this map, one and two being on the blocks on the north with, the, with Syria, eight, nine, and 10 being the blocks in the south. And if you see like there are like the red blocks, these are the two blocks that had been uh, uh, contracted to uh, Total as an operator with uh, Nova, uh, Novatech and ENI as partners to Total in Block 4 and Block 9. And this was the, the, the contract that Lebanon signed with uh, Total ENI Novatech in 2017. Um, and uh, the green blocks are the blocks that were open for the second licensing round and will go uh, to, uh, we'll go later and discuss the second licensing round. So uh, in 2000 and in, in February 2020, actually, the, the drill ship arrived, Tungsten Explorer, uh, is the, uh, the drill ship that was commissioned by Total to come and drill the first exploratory drilling in offshore Lebanon, the, in the history of Lebanon, in uh, February 2020, in Block 4, which is in the northern part of Lebanon. So for 60 days, uh, the drill ship uh, did its exploration and it went into the depth of 4,076 meters. But unfortunately, there, were no, there, there was no discovery or commercial discovery. And there were traces of gas that were found, but there were no quantities. And more importantly, the reservoir, the, uh, if you want, the type of the reservoir, which was similar to the reservoirs in Tamar and Aphrodite, this is what Total was looking for, they couldn't find it in block four. So today, uh, Total had sent its, uh, its uh, detailed uh, report to uh, the Lebanese government, but for now, we don't know what the future of block four will be. Will Total continue working in block four or it will give it back to, uh, to the Lebanese authorities? That we don't know until today. So there was, there was a second, uh, second licensing round that was supposed to end in April 2020, but it was postponed uh, because of the because of several situ uh, several conditions. One, it was like the situation in the country; it was at the hype of the revolution. Second, that there were companies. We were told that there were companies, especially Chinese companies, that were interested in bidding, but they didn't have time. So it was postponed for the first time until a, until uh, uh, Ju July 2020. And then another second, a second postponement happened until, and it said that it's until the end of 2021. So if the government, the Lebanese government wants to launch this, uh, uh, the second licensing round, it has to start early January or February so that it is, it's able to have a six month launch where it has to market this, uh, second licensing round and then be able within the, the other six months to grant the, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the blocks. Uh, so will that happen? We're not sure that will happen. Looking, uh, in looking at the conditions in the country and more importantly, looking at the conditions globally, we don't see that there might be an appetite for companies uh, to, uh, to bid, uh, in, in Lebanon. So what is next in line? It's block nine. Block nine, it's the block that is in the southern part of Lebanon. So uh, until today, there is a commitment from Total. We haven't heard any uh, bad news from Total. And they are, they were waiting for three scenarios, actually. Either the drill, uh, drilling continues in, or uh, the dr uh, drilling happens in block nine, uh, and before May 2021, according to the contracts that were signed with the Lebanese uh, government. It, it's unlikely that that will happen, looking at the conditions in the country and outside the country. There might be a postponement of the drilling beyond May 2021. That is likely. 
or the total cancellation of the project. We, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't have enough information to say that that cancellation might happen, but most likely they might postpone drilling in, uh, in that block. And this block, the importance of this block is that 8% of that block is in the disputed area, and we're going to see a map. But more importantly, it's like there is nothing that prevents Total from working in Block 9, because Total knew about the condition of Block 9. They knew that it is in a disputed zone, and Total had committed to continue working, even though there, it was disputed. So the dispute does not prevent Total from working, because there were a lot of analysis saying that Total is not working in Block 9 because there is this dispute, which is not the case. But Total, for today, we don't know when they will start the work. Okay, so this map is very important to remember, because this might be the last time that this map is going to be used. So this is a map that I'm sure like a lot of people have seen. And it is about like, these are the Lebanese blocks. And this red line is the line that says that from point one that you see and point 23, this is the 860 square kilometers of disputed zone between Lebanon and Israel. And now you'll know why I'm saying that this might be the last time we see this map and it will never be used again in what is coming next. Okay, so. I remember this map very well. Okay, so what happened? At the beginning of October this year, everybody was surprised to hear that the Lebanese government is ready to go into negotiations with the indirect negotiations with the uh, Israeli. And the Speaker of the Parliament that was in charge kind of, of negotiating this framework with the Americans came up and, uh, and, stay, and there was a public statement with six points that says that based on the good uh, the good relations between Leb uh, Lebanon Israel under the UNIFIL flag or if you want like the the good the good atmosphere in um, if you want in uh, uh, the, the limitation of the uh, land borders and based on that uh, if you want um, context we are going to continue into negotiating the maritime borders and these maritime borders will be uh, in, uh, the, the meetings will be hold, uh, uh, held in Nakura, okay, and then it will be under the present under the umbrella of the uh, of UNSCOR, the UN, and the mediator would be the US will be the mediator, and the and then there are other um, uh, points in the framework that says that once there is an agreement on the maritime borders, these coordinates that will be agreed upon will be sent to the UN to be registered in the UN, uh, 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 in the UN. And then second, once there is like agreement on the, uh, on the land and the maritime, uh, uh, on the land, the blue line agreed and signed by Lebanon, Israel and UNIFIL. So this will be the, the line, the, uh, the land line, uh, the land borders will be signed between Lebanon, Israel and the UNIFIL. And the maritime borders will be agreed upon, and both parties will sign, and they will implement the outcome agreed upon. And we, may, we they will make sure that the U.S. will play a very constructive role and fa for fast results. And remember these fast results, because nothing in this framework says that there are timelines or deadlines. So this is open negotiations, but it was assumed that it will be fast, and everybody wants fast results. Okay, so these are the six points of these negotiations, of the indirect negotiations, the framework that Lebanon and Israel agreed upon so that they went into negotiations. So uh, the first meeting was on October 14. It was meet and don't greet because basically Lebanon and Israel, Israeli teams shouldn't talk to each other. So I, so I guess they, they put the ground rules. It was a very short meeting, one hour so and so, and then Later on, on the 28th, 29th of October, the first and second technical rounds happened. 11 November, the third technical round happened. And then on November 2nd, it, on the, uh, December 2nd, there was supposed to be a fourth technical round, but it was replaced by the U.S. mediator coming to Beirut only, meeting with the Lebanese negotiating team and the authorities, and then left. There, they said there might be a meeting before and year. We don't know. It's not scheduled. And after that, we believe that they will be waiting for Biden to take over. And then we don't know if the, if the uh, mediator will be the same or the team will change. 
Okay, so all of these we don't know. Well, why this December 2 uh, meeting did not happen and it was replaced by uh, a bilateral meeting between the mediator and the Lebanese team? So expectations versus surprise. So when the Americans and the Israelis entered to these negotiations, they thought that this will be uh, negotiations around the 860 square kilometers, which is known as the disputed zone. And on the map, it's the uh, orange or the red, depending on your screen, a bit of it, where it says 860 square kilometers. Even the Israeli minister, uh, energy minister, before going into the negotiations, he said that we are ready to give 52% of the disputed zone to Lebanon. We're going into uh, good faith. We want fast results and we want this to be over the soonest. Well, Lebanon surprised everyone on this first technical uh, meeting when they put on the table a new map. And this new map says that we do not agree on the 800 square kilometers, but on the contrary, we do have another line which is based on all the legal, uh, if you want, interpretations of UNCLOSE. And here you go, here is the new Lebanese line, which claims that half of Karish is Lebanese. And Karish is a proven reserve field and the, 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 uh, and, uh, the development is ready and production should start by 2021. So in doing that, Lebanon is not breaching any agreement, right? Because in the framework, if you remember, it doesn't say that the negotiations should happen around the 800 square kilometers. Nowhere in the text, it says that the negotiations should happen only on the 800 square kilometers. So was it a loophole that Lebanon used? Was it a mistake from the US and the Israeli not to put that? Was it an assumption that the negotiations will happen only on the 800 square kilometers, whatever the result, whatever happened, there was a big surprising effect that was put on the table the first, the, the first, uh, during the first uh, technical meeting. So all these ne negotiations and going into these negotiations launched battles that the Lebanese, uh, Lebanese uh, negotiating team is uh, kind of going through. So for the first battle, it's about the narrative. According to the Lebanese authorities, okay, and this is from what we are understanding and seeing in the country, Israel has created a dispute, a dispute that should have never existed. Because according to the Lebanese, there is nothing called point one. So if you all know of, of those who are, uh, who are uh, like uh, uh, dealing with these issues, we know that the Israelis use point one as saying that this has been the point that Lebanon and Cyprus identified in 2007 when they agreed on an agreement or they agreed on, a the, on the delimitation of the maritime borders between Lebanon and, uh, and Cyprus. But the issue is that Lebanon never ratified that uh, agreement. And if you go to the UN okay, a website where all these documents are placed and, uh, and documented, you see on the Lebanon page, and you see it in red here, under the maritime boundary delimitation agreements and other material, you, they say no treaty is available. It doesn't say that there is a Cyprus-Lebanon treaty. And if you go to the UN page, the Cypriot page, you, you see that there is an agreement with Israel, there is an agreement with Egypt, there is an agreement with Greece, with Turkey, but there is no agreement with Lebanon. Therefore, if there is no agreement between Lebanon and Cyprus, Point one doesn't exist. Therefore, Israel had no basis to use point one besides the fact that point one has no legal basis on how to delimitate borders according to UNCLOSE or according to any other law. So this is first that Lebanon is battling Israelis with the narrative. The second is like before the, the Cypriots and the Israelis went to negotiation, they knew about point 23 that was being drawn by the Lebanese because uh, the, 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 uh, the Cypriots and the Israelis did their agreement in December 2009. And by July to, uh, to uh, December 2010, by July 2010, Lebanon had sent its new coordinates, which were point 23, to the UN to say that these are the coordinates. Therefore, Israelis knew that there was this point 23, but they chose to use point one. To, and therefore, this is the problem that, that was created. Moreover, 
the the minister, the Israeli uh, minister of energy, was announced and stated that Lebanon ha has changed its mind seven times, the border seven times, and he even talked directly, uh, tweeted directly to the Lebanese president in Arabic, even saying that you 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 you've been changing your mind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it is not accurate at all because the only time Lebanon sent its coordinates to the UN were like the point twenty three. And it sent a decree that says that Lebanon has the right to change these coordinates depending on more data or depending if there are negotiations with other uh, parties concerned. Therefore, Lebanon, this is the narrative that is trying now to fight, saying that we are in, in our rights, we haven't changed our mind, and this problem has been created by the Israelis. To go to the second battle that Lebanon is fighting is the Hof line. So as we said, like, in 2011, 2012, there was an initiative by Frederick Hoff. At that time, he was uh, in charge of this file to mediate between Lebanon and Israel. And Hoff came up with a line that we call in Lebanon the Hoff line, which gives for 55% of this disputed zone between point one and point three to Lebanon and 45% to Israel. So for Lebanon today, they and Lebanon, Lebanon never accepted that and it never uh, ratified it or never. Uh, and there are no official uh, official documents that say that this is something that is acceptable by the Lebanese. We always talked about the Hof line, but nothing official says that the Hof line is acceptable. So basically, Lebanon does not accept the Hof line because for Lebanon, they see the Hof line as being the maximalist claim of Israel. Because first of all, the Hof line uh, def finds the equitable solution, and we'll go back to Tehelit and the and the rock uh, that is being given full effect in, in the limitation of the borders. And secondly, Lebanon does not agree with the approach used by Hof that had started the point like three miles away from the uh, terminus point, which is the terminus, which is the land and sea, where the land and sea touches, whatever. So they do uh, they don't accept that because actually the terminus is a rock in Lebanon between Lebanon and Israel it doesn't change and therefore there was no excuse to start 3 miles away from that point but uh, most probably they have done that because there was an agreement there was a disagreement about where the, the terminus side, where the point starts in the in the sea and we'll go back to that as well because now this is the main problem so therefore for Lebanon, they feel that the Hof line is the Israeli maximalist claim. Therefore, today, the real dispute is between the Israeli maximalist claim and the Lebanese maximalist claim. And therefore, for Lebanon, Hof line is dead. There is nothing called Hof line. There is nothing called 860 square kilometers that they should be doing there. Uh, they should negotiate upon. Okay? So, and then th this is where you see like the equidistant line with full effect to rocks, rocks talking about the Khalid rock. This is what Hof is, uh, had been uh, uh, um, uh, promoting. And Lebanon today is using the equidistant line with a, no, a zero effect to rocks, to the Khalid, and therefore the green light. And we'll come back to that. So once Lebanon actually uh, 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 put on the table this new map, uh, uh, the Israelis tried through the media to intimidate the Lebanese and they circulated a, a map that has never, I think that was not put on the table with the Lebanese, uh, which is this, uh, a li the re a red line, uh, the red line, if you want, the Azimut uh, 310 line that says that if you are claiming Karish, we can claim not only block eight and nine, but even block five that is northern to the, to Lebanon. But this, this map has never, I don't think that was put on the table to be negotiated. So, and on the, the parallel of latitude, I think the that Lord is if Lebanon, I think she froze. Ozan, you're on mute. Uh, we we are Lauren beyond connection these connection problem, months. I think. Yeah. So, uh, to keep it short, uh, yes. Can you hear me? No, Laurie, sorry. Can uh, you hear you, me? you froze there for, yeah, you froze there for maybe 30 seconds. 
We can hear you yes, now, but you, you froze me? there for about 30 seconds. Can you please maybe recap what you just said? Yes, we can hear you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, yeah, we can hear you. Oh. No. Uh, she's completely <laughs> left. Let's give it a minute. Yeah. Uh, Let's give it a minute and then maybe she will rejoin. By she, way, rejoin. Uh, she will rejoin on her phone. Yeah. Uh, by the way, maybe we can continue with Mr. Nedim and I then mean, turn back to Lauri. Yeah. Can... Is it possible? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can uh, do that. So let me just let... check one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can. Are you rejoining? She can rejoin on her phone. I'm I'm just sending her. Okay. We are experts in Lebanon to <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yes. Come back. Yeah, she she didn't realize that she lost us. So, okay. yeah, so maybe she, maybe she's joining us back. She's okay, let's uh, maybe. Seven she she was cut off at a very crucial yeah, point. Let's, so, yeah, let's yeah 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 yeah. Let's give uh, Lori time to wrap up. Yeah. You can. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Lori. Uh, welcome, welcome back. Lori again. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I still have yeah. like I still have like two minutes. So, okay. <laughs> no, no. Take take your time. Okay. I will do less. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. So uh, I don't know what happened. Okay. That we yes. So. Okay. Can you see the, the Can you see the presentation? Yes. Yeah, we're going to see it. Uh, it's actually still uploading. It's. I can see. Uh, can you the, see the it? Background ready. It's still uploading. No. Yes, you can see it. Uh, not yet. No, we can. It's uploading. Yet. Not yet. Yes, yes, it's yeah, there we, now. We yes. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. uh, so uh, uh, two two minutes to to conclude. So basically. What we what we are seeing today, it's like there is a, a true battle over like how how much effect should we give to Tehelit? And Tehelit is a rock, okay, that is away like from the shores of from the coast of Israel. It's like one uh, one kilometer away, and from Lebanon Lebanese coast, I think it's like uh, two kilometers away. So. And if you see on the, uh, the the white rock here, so this is the uh, borders, and then this is the Tehelit, the island, okay, or the rock. And to understand the importance of it, so a couple of weeks ago, the Minister of Energy took the negotiating team and media crew, and they went on the rock and sat and drank coffee or tea, I don't know, just to say that, look, this is a rock that should be taken into consideration and you cannot ignore the effect of the rock because Lebanon is claiming that this, this rock shouldn't have any effect on delimitating the uh, borders between Lebanon and Israel. So, and uh, th this is one, uh, one problem, the effect of Tehelit on the, the delimitation. The second, the second issue is the, where the starting point is. And this is uh, this is a picture we took last week when you were doing the, <laughs> the, when you were doing the presentation with the Israelis, and this is what they show. They show that Lebanon's starting point is way inside the Israeli borders, which is not accurate because Lebanon is claiming this point. The Lebanese starting point is there where the Israelis are putting their starting point. So what, where is the difference actually? So the difference is that so and this is taken from their side. Ras about we're talking about Ras and Naura. So for Lebanon, Ras and Naura is exactly where you see it, which is the point in the sea, and it cannot be any point which is like up in the hills. And B1 is our point on the hills, which is like the borders between Lebanon and Israel. What Israel is trying to do is trying to shift B1 northern, like a couple of meters to the north of Lebanon, 
and then so that then Ras and Naura will shift again. And if it shifts, so then it will change the whole uh, the whole delimitation of the uh, of the uh, of the borders. So basically, there is two problems with two wrongs. So about first, Lebanon is saying the starting point is Ras and Naura. Okay, so and then. And, and any change on the location of B1, security reasons, not security reasons, regardless of, it is not acceptable because it will change, it will divert from the, uh, 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 the delimitation. And definitely, Lebanon is refusing to give any effect to Tekhelit the rock. Because if this Tekhelit is given full effect, this means that Lebanon will lose one uh, uh, 1,800 square kilometers. And this will be impossible for the Lebanese to accept that because of a small rock that is insignificant, that we are giving it a full effect and we're making Lebanon lose 1,800 square uh, kilometers. That could be rich in and potential in resources. So my last, my last um, uh, slide is about the battle, the last battle, which is over resources. Are we going to see Operation Saving Karish or it will be an operation claiming Al Qursh? And for those who know Arabic and, uh, and Hebrew, so Karish is the shark in Hebrew and Al Qursh is the shark in Arabic. So are we calling it Karish or are we calling it Al Qursh? Who's going to win the battle? This is the most important, I, uh, one of the important battles. Lebanon, from what we're seeing, is committed to negotiations until an agreement is reached. Uh, and Lebanon will keep on fighting for 0.29. And for Lebanon, the old maps are dead. The new maps are the maps that we are seeing now. And this is the real disputed zone. We're not talking anymore about half. We're not talking about 860 square kilometers. No 0.1, no 0.23. This is the battle that Lebanon is fighting today. And they would want to see a counter offer from the Israelis because till now we haven't seen any counter any counter offer from the Israelis beside what we are seeing, we are hearing in the media saying that you've changed your mind, this is not acceptable, etc., etc., etc. But there is no serious offer put on the table in that. And uh, Lebanon is in a very comfortable position. Actually, it has nothing to lose because. We are in a very deep economic situation. We have a deep crisis and oil and gas will not come before 10 years if we find anything tomorrow. Therefore, it's not that it is a pressing issue for Lebanon today because it has to do, it has a lot of work to do. It has a lot of infrastructure work in economy, in politics, in other issues it has to do before it, see, before it sees gas coming in and the revenues coming in. So therefore, the, the Lebanon is a very, in a very comfortable position. Today, we see that Israel is not in that situation because at the end of the day, today, Israel need to save Karish because Karish has been invested by Energian and they've put a lot of investment. And if this is, is, is not going to be solved, Karish and Energian will, might, might be in a very difficult position. If an agreement is not reached, Lebanon will continue a fight and will go with the new maps and put the coordinates with the UN. Karish will be considered disputed deposits and Lebanon might go after the owners of Karish. So I will keep it here and I would, uh, and then uh, whoever has questions, I'll be ready to answer the questions. And thank you. Most welcome, Laurie. Thank you for this comprehensive overview of the presentation. Uh, you gave us it's really very informative um i also learned quite a lot on my behalf uh also uh, you know you also maybe heard some different things compared to what we what we discussed last week but i think um you know there will be questions and there are already i can see in the comments uh, our viewers are posting uh, many questions regarding uh what you what you went over Lori and i have noted some questions here which i will come back to you on. so let us now uh move on to nadim shahadi Nadine, if I may, uh, could you please give us a brief historical overview of Lebanese-Israeli relations uh, and specifically what the security implications of this relationship are uh, for Lebanon? How do we, how did we come to where we are today? Oh. 
Okay, now you can hear me now. Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, Nadim. Oh, you yeah, can hear me. We can hear you. Okay, I yes. can't see you anymore. <laughs> That's, uh, oh, uh, maybe you uh, you maximize you know, your can... screen. That may upset my. Yeah. That's okay. That's uh, that, that's that's okay. Yeah, just go uh, on, please. Yeah. Th thank you so much for for the invitation. Uh, and thank you, thank you, Oksan and and Suha. I, I will start before talking about uh, Lebanese-Israeli relations. I'll talk about Lebanese uh, Nadim Suha relations because we yeah. met a couple of weeks ago at a seminar in uh, virtual, of course, in in uh, at the Fletcher School, where where we heard from a Greek perspective. Uh, and we and I also heard the, the of course the Tespan perspective, which was very very interesting, uh, uh, the work you're you're doing, and then we and then last week I I I listened very carefully to your seminar with the Israeli uh, co uh, colleagues from Haifa, and uh, and and today is and and we have a a bond which is which is. Uh, our we are both members of the Fletcher Mafia. Right. Now, <laughs> this, this is this is a bond that Lebanon and Turkey don't have anymore in from Ottoman days. Uh, I mean, Lebanon used to be part of the Ottoman Empire, and and uh, Lebanon and Tur since the breakup of the Ottoman Empire in, and the region into nation states. These bonds have disappeared, except for one very significant factor, which is that Lebanon kept the social sort of fabric of the empire in, in Lebanon. Lebanon is the only country that has incorporated a sort of Ottoman millet system uh, instead of a uh, laïc, laïcité, la, a la, a la, a la Kemalism or, or secular system as has been adopted by most nations, nation states in, 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 the, in the region. I will, I will come back to that, but before that, I want to put, give, give a, give a political context to what we're, what we're, what we're discussing. Um, basically, as you all know, there is no single border that, uh, especially not maritime border, that doesn't have uh, problems. And these, especially, and in in our area, there's there's probably only one that's that's not disputed, and all the disputes are significant, historical, fundamental, unresolvable. And if we're going to wait till they're resolved. It's uh, it's going to take a, a, a very long time. So what we're talking about here is the conflict between international law and negotiations. Most conflicts, international law does not provide solutions. It provides a framework. The solutions have to be reached by negotiations. Now, my understanding of Lebanese-Israeli relations in that context is from a conference I attended with an organization in Switzerland, uh, which uh, which is uh, which which is called the the Levant the the, the Levant Mont Pelerin now, and they were discussing the border. And an international lawyer there told me the problem is very simple, Nadim. Lebanon behaved in a very gentlemanly fashion when it drew its maritime border at point 23. It, it took something, it sort of negotiated with itself and took a very reasonable uh, line. Whereas the Israelis are tougher negotiators, they took a maximalist, they took a maximalist line. So what's happening, what we're seeing now is Lebanon in a way, responding with the maximalist positions, and the Israelis going into another maximalist position, and and uh, this will this can go on forever. I don't think 
I, I, and so I agree with Laurie that this is a problem that the Israelis brought upon themselves. They could have accepted a reasonable uh, line uh, without provoking this 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 dispute. Uh, so, uh, and uh, it's much more than about a rock. It's about the elephant in the room, I think, and and. Uh, and this is where Lebanese internal politics will 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 come in, and where the regional context is is, is very important. So, so both countries need to start working on on the region. When the, when there are when there is a when there is a, a shared area, which is it's obvious we have now with 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 Israel. The solution is very is very simple. They agree they agree to share. The, if if there was no conflict that that prevent that prevented uh, that prevented this now when you talk about lebanon we have to distinguish between lebanon as a state and between lebanon as political actors and this is partly the 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 the, the issue i be, i described before that lebanon kept a and a, a kind of an Ottoman structure uh, where communities are given their full uh, represent, representative rights instead of secular individuals, and where there is no unified national identity. We have several identities with the will to live together. It's a, it's a different model, and this resulted in if we didn't have that model, we wouldn't have Nakura. Uh, Lebanon decided at one stage to become Greater Lebanon and to include the South, the Bekaa, and and parts of North Northern Lebanon to add them to historical Mount Lebanon, which was a smaller Lebanon. Now, so Lebanon went against the the trend that was set by Kemal Ataturk in the region and was followed by the Arab nationalists, by the Ba'ath, by Burkiba, by all by all that. And we and and we, we went we also are have a completely different choice from the Israelis because the Israelis also chose a homogeneous ch chose to create a Jewish state. Which is fine by me. I mean, you can create whatever you like, but this means that they, 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 the equivalent in Lebanon is to choose the smaller Lebanon where the Maronites are a majority and which is more homogeneous, and rather than the Lebanon which was the Greater Lebanon, which the Lebanese chose in 1920, they lobbied for in. In Versailles and San Remo and all these conferences, and they they realized in 1920, almost 100 years, over 100 years ago now, and and uh, this in, this means that Lebanon has incorporated areas where who were who were not part of of the same Ottoman structure before and then and, and and all that. So Lebanon is a is a huge success as an experiment because a hundred years ago, people in the south had rejected the the uh, the Greater Lebanon. They they had said the slogan then was "Hekmet Turki wala Hekmet Kirki," meaning that they prefer Turkish rule over the rule of Kirki, which is the Maronite patriarch. And uh, Tripoli wa, and the north rejected the Bekaa rejected. And uh, there were lots of competing programs. I think now we see, especially amongst the younger generation, which Laurie can speak for more than I can, we see a very unified uh, country where there is much less uh, uh, rejection of this entity. Uh, it took a hundred years. Maybe a bit less because I think this phenomenon started post uh, civil war. It took a hundred years, and but, but now, but 
But the difference is still that you have a state and you have its components and they are recognized political actors and you have and the role of parliament or of the political system is to reconcile between the different political 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 actors who each have a veto on uh, on it um, so you you end up with a paradox which is that Lebanon is the only Arab state which is still at war, open war with Israel, because 1701 is a cessation of hostilities between the Lebanese state and Israel. It's not a, it's not even, it's not an end of conflict or or a or a ceasefire. It's just a cessation of hostilities. And Lebanon is at the same time the only country in the region that has never really fought. I mean, the Lebanese state, the Lebanese army, as the organ of the state, has never fought in any of the Arab-Israeli uh, wars. We had a symbolic participation in 1948 by a brigade, which uh, we make a lot of uh, noise about, but it was not the Lebanese state participating in, in, in a war. So this is the contrast. The contrast and the problem that we have, and the elephant in the room, is that it would have been much easier not to go into that problem and not to get involved in discussing Iraq or, or, or all that. I think the, in defense of the Hof line, the Hof line chose a point in the, in, in, in the sea rather than a point on, on the ground, precisely to avoid the, 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 the uh, um, land, land border, uh, border issue. And it shows it, I think, in, uh, and Laurie can correct me, of course, uh, in agreement between both, between both parties. And uh, what I understand is that both parties having agreed to that, Lebanon, which as a sovereign state has every right to do so, has uh, changed its uh, border uh, border cal cal calculation uh, because of more technical information available from the uh, UK Hydrological Office and other and others, um, and and we are now in in this uh, situation. So I, I, I don't agree with Laurie uh, uh, that we should settle the, the land border first. Settling the land border will involve not just the elephant in the room, which is Hezbollah. It will involve uh, getting, uh, it will involve Iran, Syria, Gulf, uh, Israel. It will involve, uh, you know, you're opening up to the whole regional even Turkey, regional, regional, regional conflict, where Lebanon has failed and where, which has led us to where we are now, is that uh, um, in uh, 2009, 2010, in, during that time, there were negotiations between different parties in Lebanon that uh, that was to recognize that we have different views and we will never resolve these problems amongst ourselves because they are connected to gulf iran united states russia turkey israel we never we'll, it's not something we can resolve internally in lebanon uh, we can agree in lebanon not uh, that that we will that we will have these these different views but uh, the object of the negotiations, which were led by Dr. Muhammad Shatah, um, it was is, is to to prevent Lebanon being the battlefield of of that regional conflict. So the idea was to we are part of the conflict, but let's not be the battlefield of it. This failed miserably, of course, because we are part. We we uh, because both parties did not uh, respect the agreement. 
the agreement said basically, let's avoid being the battlefield, and there is no reason why we can't produce electricity and pick up garbage and all that and do reforms. Uh, if we disagree on the on the regional issue, let's. Uh, but this collapsed uh, mainly with Hezbollah's participation in Syria and and, and all that. So so we we could we could not spare Lebanon being uh, the battlefield and uh, this rock <laughs> will drag Lebanon back. We're, this rock symbolizes going back to the link to the battlefield. I, I think. So it's much more serious than than uh, than a technical issue or a or international law law, law issue, and it should be resolved uh, in the same way as I don't think you can resolve Turkish Greek differences that easily or Cypriot differences that easily, but you can reach an agreement over over maritime exploration uh, which is to the interest of, of both so that's that's my comment thank you again thank you very much Nadim uh, and uh, our regards go to your uh, background your comments uh, about our historic past and yes, forgive us so for not, thank for, you not for, for disobeying the, uh, this. the model <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I, I love Lebanon. I've been there uh, several times and been all over the country from Bekaa to South <coughs> side. I am sort of love it very much. Yeah. Um, so I have two questions actually while we're on the spot, Nadim, for you. So one question, uh, and you mentioned Iran. And uh, I read an article today. Um, I think it was on Al Jazeera, but uh, I might be wrong which said that uh, the incoming U.S. administration, Biden, in order to appease Iran, they might ease their position vis-a-vis -vis the Lebanese-Israeli dispute and cite or tilt more towards the Lebanese position in this maritime negotiation. Do you foresee any such give or take in the grander scheme of things? Um, I, I don't understand American politics well enough. Uh, I, I thought I did, but the more I know, the less I understand. In, <laughs> In, in American politics, it, and I don't think I can predict what the Biden administration can do, but I, but what you can interpret from that article is that Lebanon is a hostage, basically. So, so it's a hostage of Iran at the table for negotiation. The blockage in Lebanese politics and Lebanese negotiations in the Lebanese economy is all connected to that. Our, uh, our connection, our uh, the, 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 the country's economy and banking system collapsed because of that hostage situation, mm. in, in my view. I mean, we were, we were cut off, we were, we were kept in a state of war, which damaged the economy. We were cut off from our main source of income as a country, uh, um, by, uh, which is the, the GCC. I mean, we have 400,000 Lebanese working in the GCC. They are the main source of investment, tourism, uh, and and aid and uh, support. And uh, we have historical relations with the GCC, and we were cut off from, from that. So, so, so I, I think this is the best interpretation of such an article that if if the Iranians think that they will have a more gullible administration that they can fool the in, in because the americans have been playing uh, like a pendulum you know every administration cancels what the previous one uh, i hope they're wrong <laughs> but 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 this is the conclusion you can take from that thank you nadim and my second question uh, would be if uh, somehow lebanon and israel reconcile their differences and come to a, a solution, a negotiated solution on the table to divide this area equitably. Do you think that in the mid to long term, this can turn into to a restoration of diplomatic 
or not resurgence, but establishment of diplomatic ties between the two countries, like the Abraham Accords Israel did with UAE and Bahrain. Do you think is that a possibility? Um, yes, certainly. I mean, Lebanon is divided into two camps. Yes, one camp, uh, which is that of Prime Minister Hariri, uh, in the 1990s, uh, basically bet on regional peace. All their strategy and investment was was uh, based that there's going to be peace and Lebanon will be part of will be the hub that will that will uh, and that bet was lost because but at least this was the the political direction that that camp if you like the other camp is linked to the resistance access to to uh, Hamas Hezbollah Iran uh, or Venezuela Cuba which 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 is for perpetual war uh, you know, you the Israelis withdraw from South Lebanon, then they have to withdraw from the Shuba farms, then they have to withdraw from Shuba, then they have to withdraw from the Rock, then they have to withdraw, then it, then they have we have to liberate America. You know, we fight America. It's, uh, we, it's a it's a perpetual agenda of Iran, which is open. I mean, they're not, nobody's hiding it. They they openly say say it. So these are the two agendas. But however, these are two political actors. The Lebanese state will be the last state to sign peace with Iran, with Israel, because it will only do so when there is consensus between the two, or when one side wins, which never happens, or when there is a, a, a formula like so the Lebanese state as a state has adheres to the Arab peace initiative. The Arab peace initiative calls for norm normalization with Israel w given three conditions or se several several conditions, which are very attainable, uh, but no, they're not being attained. Uh, so if the Arab peace initiative happens and um, then, then that's that would be one avenue for for Lebanon to get to get in. But I don't think these negotiations will lead to peace. These negotiations, on the contrary, are uh, making the solution to the maritime issue much more complicated by linking it to the greater, to the greater problem. So, we we don't need battles. <laughs> we need to avoid the battles. To, 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 because these battles are not winnable, uh, in, 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 especially not by Lebanon. So, so that, that's, that's the philosophy that part of the Lebanese government was, was following before. Uh, yeah, uh, if, I, if I may come in. Uh, yes, please. Yes, uh, can I? So just a quick uh, follow up on what uh, uh, Nadim is, uh, is saying, because at the beginning, uh, the no. Lebanese position was that they, do, they did want to link the sea and the, uh, the, uh, the maritime and the land borders together. And there is no agreement if the other side, if we don't agree on both. But uh, the circumstances why we entered into, the, into these negotiations was, yeah. they were very political. Okay, so it was after sanctions put on the uh, on the uh, first aid of the uh, speaker of the parliament that if you want fasten the the whole process and make it make it uh, faster and brought to this agreement the framework agreement. Okay, so and then we see in the framework that there is no the, it doesn't state clearly that they both should be agreed right. on or there is no agreement so kind of the language is yeah. very uh, nuanced therefore for that reason they, nobody is saying that you should link this uh, the uh, this uh, the maritime borders with this uh, with the land borders but the most important point is b1 and ras and naura lebanon will not going to compromise on b1 or ras and naura because it will change course, the whole delimitation in, the border, the battle, in, in yeah. the maritime border but it is not linking it to Shabbat. it is not linking it to Shabbat. 
And one other thing, I think today we do have a, and, and we do have to distinguish between the political track that led to the negotiations and the technical track that is happening. I think we should keep the technical track, go all the way, but and then we'll think what to do with whatever the, the outcome is. And will there be a political compromise? Will there be other requests, etc.? That is a different track. So I think just for the for what is happening today and for to keep these two tracks for now parallel tracks. Later on, I'm sure the technical will come into the politics and there will be a kind of I don't know something else. But for today or for the for the coming for the for the negotiations, these two tracks are uh, are kind of should be left alone, like this dealing. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree that they should be delinked. <laughs> of course, but uh, but I I think that the way the way the negotiations are are happening will link them even further. That's that's my that's my comment, because insisting on uh, on a land uh, on a land uh, point which instead of a sea point, which is what the Hof negotiations did. We, I had a conversation with uh, Fred Hoff. But, but this is based on this. This is based on the legal uh, legal readings. It's not because yes, yes. Lebanon yes. would want. To. This is like based on where you should start uh, exactly. your uh, maritime maritime delimitation. It should start from the point that ends the sea, the sea from uh, the land from the sea, and this is where Ras Naura Naura is, according to 1923 international boundaries absolutely, between Lebanon absolutely. and, and the Israelis Ras don't recognize. Exactly. So I don't think Lebanon, strategically, tactically, shouldn't give up on that no, point. No, and no, it no, is the right not. of Lebanon. This is the border where the border is. So you yeah. start where your border is. You don't start with a different border that doesn't exist. So I think this is what uh, what is at stake, at least uh, in these negotiations. But you see, Laurie, Laurie, when you when we talk like this, we're opening, we're opening the way for people to say, you know, to start banging on tables and say we will not give up one inch of our territory and all that. This will complicate. We are linking it even further. I think Nadim's video froze. Yeah. Yeah. I froze. But these are, yes, but these yes, are negotiations. <laughs> These are the beauty of negotiations, right? This is why you go into yeah, negotiation. Yeah. And, it, and I think it boils down to to the problem between, uh, you know, with international law. You know, I, I don't think that, that international law can resolve any problem if you stick to it. You just need it to be a reference and a... Uh, that's... that's uh, <laughs> Um, I, I have one uh, final question to uh, Lori uh, Olson, and then I'll come back to you. But please, okay. if you have a comment to make, then go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have a comment. For example, I think uh, all uh, the international law is not so uh, uh, complicated to solve all the uh, EEZ conflicts in in most of the region. For example, mostly in the Eastern Mediterranean. For example, from side of Turkey, we have lots of conflicts with. Uh, with uh, Cyprus and with Greece, and I think th th there are some uh, small similar uh, situations in Lebanon and Israel side. Um, and in addition, I'm going to ask to Lauri uh, as she show uh, showed a map uh, to us that uh, those uh, those rocks are belong to uh, Israel or Lebanon initial initially. As I know, uh, as I have checked from the internet, it's been. Uh, Those, those, yeah. those, so, those yeah. belong to. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, which uh, we, you mean the Rasa Naura, where the the the, the start of the maritime. Uh, Tachelet, the small rocks. Ah, Tachelet. Yeah. Ah, no, Tachelet is on the Israeli side. So the problem is like, what effect should you give on te, for Tachelet when you're doing your maritime board, uh, uh, maritime borders? So Israel is requesting a full effect of Tehelet, which is giving it like more than uh, what it is giving it, it's becoming disproportionate and it's becoming not equitable solution because you are giving a full effect to a small rock 
on the and making Lebanon lose a big a chunk of the maritime uh, border. So this is and Lebanon today is claiming zero effect to Tehelet, which is giving it like part of Karish. So will the negotiations? Uh, for until now, the Israelis are not putting a counter argument to our counter offer to Lebanon because they want to go back to uh, to, uh, to to uh, to the uh, to the older, if you want, or to the classical dispute that we knew about it for so so uh, so much uh, uh, like in the past. So currently, the issue is like: should we give full effect to Tehelit or not? I I do believe that the the Ras and Naura is very clear where the borders is between Lebanon and Israel. And where Ra Ras, Ras and Naura is, so Ras is the head. So where is the head? The head in the sea. It's very. It's where the point I, that I showed you on the map. It's very clear from the Israeli side is clear, and from the Lebanese side is very clear where the starting point is. The problem should uh, now is like should we give full effect to Tehelit or zero effect to Tehelit or end up with a partial effect to Tehelit? That that is where Lebanon today is is negotiating. And Israelis are not putting a counter offer to that, and this is where they should start putting a counter offer because yeah. they cannot delay this issue, or else it will become very dramatic because then Lebanon will will claim uh, Karish and will take action by, for claiming Karish, and then energy could continue developing, and later on at one point energy will have to give money to Lebanon because it's part of it. It's Lebanese if this this thing continues without any uh, solution. So that's why it's very it's very critical today for the Israelis to put a counter offer on the table and not neglect this offer and and believe that the the Americans will pressure the Lebanese and play different other cards so that the Lebanese uh, could give uh, could yes. away and compromise. So yeah. it's a tough job and I think it requires a lot of uh, unity within within the country uh, to be all behind the team. Uh, the negotiating team and what they are do doing. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough job they're doing. Now, uh, and, Lori, and one last question. To... Sorry, Nadim, oh. go ahead. Oh, no, no, no go ahead. just uh, in addition to, to add, uh, to complicate matters further, in international law, Lebanon's position seems to be very solid. So, so the Israelis have provoked a crisis that they cannot resolve in international law to their to their to their uh, as, and in any case they are not signatories to the conventions and and it it complicates even even, even further so so th so there is there is there is that that additional uh, yeah uh, Lori, uh, going back to that map, and Osan, you might remember this photo. Actually, you took a screenshot of uh, the presentation from last week. Yeah, yeah, that addition, photo, which uh, shows point. Time. Do you want me to uh, share it again? Is it possible? Uh, is it possible? Uh, please ask the question, and I'm going to start my presentation. But uh, it's not going to be such a, a, a normal presentation. I'm going to show some uh, pictures from Google Earth, and I'm going to. Uh, uh, check some points and uh, clear my uh, questions in my mind uh, by asking you and I'm going to make the yeah. presentation and I, uh, through asking you some questions. Is it possible? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm just checking yeah, my, yeah, let's, let's take that way. my battery. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Lori, my question is about uh, uh, Rasal Naura. So that yes. hilltop, that hilltop, yeah. Yes. So about point E. Yes. And is that hilltop, so that's Lebanese territory or is it disputed territory? So B1 is the uh, point, uh, the border between us and them on top of the hill. And that goes straight to Ras and Naura, the point where the uh, to point is in the land. So this is where the Israelis are trying to say that they, they want to go north, uh, like to, uh, a couple of uh, meters northern to that point. Uh, because uh, and I think it has like I'm not a security person, but I think like for security security reasons more than maritime reasons, they want their borders to be uh, like 20 or 30 meters away, so that they do have the yeah. dominance over there, so that they do have dominance over uh, over Lebanon. Uh, but actually, because as yeah. you know, we have the 1923. Uh, borders, which is like between Lebanon and Palestine, and this was agreed like this international border between Palestine and Israel and uh, and Lebanon, 
and there then there is the armistice line and the blue line so they and every like every time someone is using a certain line to say that this is the border as you know like the the, the land border is not fixed yet between lebanon and israel and there are like a couple of points in the land border where there are like uh, uh, issues around it and no agreement but definitely b1 is the point lebanese point exactly and it goes down to ras and naura where the point starts and plus the lebanese army in 2018 they went and did like a, ma a real mapping not satellite not i don't know what so they went in on the ground and they did a, a more uh, precise uh, uh, pointing of uh, the borders and where the point where the lebanese borders are on this uh, between israel and, and lebanon but i guess like the beauty the beauty of all of this is like finally in lebanon at least will have like a very defined known borders because we do have same problems and or other kind of problems with the with this with the with the um, with the uh, Syrians we don't have defined borders there and with the Israelis and and we should like uh, we should delimitate our uh, maritime borders with Cyprus as well so i think it is a good exercise for lebanon to finally have defined borders i guess Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for uh, your answer. Yeah, Noted. So, sure. Osan, over to you, please. You have a yeah, presentation. You uh, I think we uh, already have uh, uh, taken further our time uh, of the webinar, uh, but no problem. Uh, initially, again, I would like to thank to our speakers from Lebanon and our moderator and our also the Beirut ambassador for uh, his support uh, for the coordination and. Um, as our moderator mentioned, we were, we were planning to host our Lebanon uh, speakers uh, in the previous webinar, but we couldn't uh, achieve this goal. But uh, hope uh, we will talk about, uh, we have uh, talked about lots of things and from the historical background, the, in it, uh, the inside politics of the Lebanon, there are lots of things to consider. I'm going to mention mostly the uh, energy side. You see the Eastern Mediterranean. Here, uh, this is uh, some Google Earth map uh, that we have uh, selected the fields. We have making lots of policies around these fields. Here you see uh, there is around 3.5 uh, trillion cubic uh, meter uh, proved reserve, proved gas reserves in the Eastern Mediterranean. And uh, much of that uh, portion is uh, belongs to the Egypt here, as you can see. This is the Zor field, the biggest field that Egypt has discovered uh in in uh in uh, before two years and these are some uh, also some conflicted uh fields that and uh, of the southern carbon uh, cyprus says that uh, i have discovered uh calypso and glacius you can see and this is the aphrodite field and uh, this is the leviathan field and we when we come to israel uh offshore here you see the uh already existing discovered fields here the uh, what was the name? Here is the Karish. Here this is the Karish field, and this is the Karish North field. And two fields, while uh, combining both reserves, uh, are around uh, 75 BCM uh, BCM uh, according to our expectations. And uh, here, as you see, these are the Lebanon uh, already existing offshore blocks. And in the first uh, first uh, bidding round, uh, Lebanon has given this uh, fourth block and the uh, ninth block to uh, total. Uh, uh, what was the name? I don't remember. Total Any and Novatec Consortium, as Laura said. Uh, these are the some uh, maybe prospects, but we are not sure about uh, those pr prospects since uh, we don't have the commercial. Uh, seismic data in addition uh, although although we have in our hands the commercial seismic data uh, we cannot be sure before drilling uh, for example uh, through the drilling of this uh, babyliss first well uh, we were expecting something in this uh, in this block but uh, there is no there is nothing found and uh, this makes the hopes uh, in a down uh, we, to lose the hopes and for example uh, we have much more hopes in this block in the uh, ninth block uh, total is planning to make the first uh, drilling activity uh, here uh, 
is absolutely the location is like here uh, it's not in the conflict area but the, the block is somehow uh, some portion of the block is in the conflict area uh, with Israel and also the Israel's energy ministry told that uh, we will not let uh, total to, to drill this well but we are not sure about it however for example although as Laura told uh, us uh, Total said to the, uh, for example, to the energy minister of Lebanon uh, that uh, we are going to make this drilling activity. We will not accept any uh, pressures coming from political pressures uh, coming from Israel. Uh, they can say like that, but for example, then when get the pressure, when when uh, they get the pressure, uh, they may say uh, due to coronavirus effect, though due to. Uh, other uh, political conflicts of uh, inner political conflicts of Lebanon, uh, we will uh, delay the drilling time. Uh, these are some, for example, uh, as you remember, uh, there are in in here, like in this area. Um, I don't remember the company name, but maybe an American company. We are planning to drill some uh, well here. Our uh, uh, Navy uh, uh, has gone to there and uh, sent the drink, uh, drilling rig away. So, uh, in reality, the rail politics is somehow different uh, in the field. For example, uh, when a Navy or Israel come to here, maybe the total uh, service service drilling company will not accept to uh, continue to drilling activity in this field. Maybe uh, we're not sure about it. Uh, while coming, for example, I would like to ask uh, this Tekelet Rax uh, to Laura. For example, I have found these Tekelet Rax here. In the previous uh, webinar, we have uh, listened that this is the Israel's military base, and the Israel side uh, says that here, uh, here is our uh, point, starting our uh, starting point. Uh, for uh, for EEZ and uh, this this line this green line uh, belongs to them, but uh, we don't have the uh, actual coordinates. This is the Google Earth, as you, as we can understand. Uh, and uh, as these are the tackle trucks, uh, I would like to ask again. For example, how these tackle trucks uh, can affect this boundary? I, I couldn't understand. Maybe there is a mistake in, mistake in our uh, maps. Uh, but for example, I uh, I thought that after uh, Laura's uh, maps, maybe uh, Tekelit rocks belongs to Lebanon side, and uh, Lebanon side says that claims that with such a line uh, through Tekelit rocks, uh, this line continues to north uh, Karish north and goes like this, and this area may be the same as Laura showed us uh, in uh, in her map uh this is the one point maybe after my presentation maybe or maybe laura you can you can get your answer he answer here now uh, hence we are on the map we can see better laura are you going to give uh, some answers to this question so, i will then yeah, so, yeah but because i'm not sure like uh, what to what to answer to the i don't know like what the answer is, or on this map, where, where, where uh, so, so, the so let me, is, is. Let, yes. let me just clarify, uh, Laurie. Actually, so what what Osan shows there is the you know the Tekalit rocks, rocks. So yes, he thought that Lebanon claims those rocks to no. be Lebanese territory. No, right. So that's no, that's no. a definitive answer. That it's Israeli. It's not because of yes. that that you are shifting the line uh, southwards. It's because of the effect of Rasan Nahura. Uh, exactly. That the line goes, yeah, okay. So, exactly. so uh, because, because no, exactly. So this is the, the this is the uh, mistake that the map that was shown last week made. So they showed that we are uh, that Lebanon is claiming at the starting point inside, like it's close to Haifa almost. I don't know <laughs> what we are claiming is like the point where the Israelis are saying their point. This is where uh, the Lebanese point is under it. So if you, if, uh, I don't know, like if you can go, I don't, do you have the map that was shown last week by the Israeli participants? Or I can uh, share actually, my screen actually, with you. Uh, as I remember, uh, the Israeli site uh, showed us such a graph. 
and uh, they told us that they showed us that this is the Israel's military base and I have but, but, seen but, but, uh, here uh, this yeah. district they have yeah. they showed us this week and they told us that this is the starting point of uh, Israel's you know, claims. The, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, this yeah. Is, if I may. If, um, I can show you on the other map. This map, I don't know exactly, so I don't want to say something wrong, but where yeah. they had shown their starting point is very close to the starting point of Lebanon. On the map, you can see it because it's even shown on the map. You see it in the sea, the rock, that is the Ras al-Naura, which is different than Tekhelit. Tekhelit is what they're calling island or what they're calling a rock. This is on the Israeli side. The problem with Lebanon is like if they give full effect in drawing in the in drawing the maritime borders with Tekhelit as an if a full effect in drawing the maritime borders, then it is be it becomes distorting the, the and this uh, distorted and it gives a, sp a space to Israel that is uh, that that this rock shouldn't have be uh, shouldn't give according to how they draw the maritime borders. So it's about where the the starting point the Ras al Naura is. Uh, it's it's uh, where the, where the Israelis were showing their own starting point very close to there, okay. So it's like a, a bit of like a, 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 a meters away. So it's about like meters away, 30, 20 meters away from their point, mm -hmm. okay. But ours is more like the Lebanese is more to the south, and theirs is going more to the north. So that it has like a full effect going up, and our the Lebanese line goes down without giving full effect to Tekhelit. Okay, now it's clear. Now, so, yeah, yeah I got it now. Yes, it's clear. Different, uh, so Tekhelit is Israeli. Nobody is claiming Tekhelit is Lebanese. The problem yeah. is about the yeah. Ras al-Naura, the starting point to draw the maritime borders. So the, 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 the dispute on the land is whether that starting point is 30, 20, 30 meters south or is it north? Which, exactly. which, which time exactly. is it? And for, Lebanon, it's, and for Lebanon, it's very clear where Ras al Naura is. It's the tip of the rock, which is in the sea, very clear on the map. And this is where Lebanon's border is with, the, uh, with, uh, with uh, Palestine. Yeah. But yeah. actually, in that yeah. case, I couldn't understand uh, how uh, how the location, uh, for example, making the starting point thirty meters uh, south uh, south, how the how the line actually goes like this. I couldn't understand that yes. uh, the background. But uh, for example, in addition, according to our estimations of this line, uh, is is going through the uh, northern Karish uh and the reserves of the northern Croatia around uh, 34 bcm uh, by mentioning it uh anyway i know i'm not the maritime lawyer and uh but from a from an engineering site uh i couldn't understand the uh actually while uh, you get 30 meters from uh with 30 meters how such an area can change because yeah. yeah, so because like how you draw the border. So I I'm not the expert, the technical expert on drawing the borders, but that point, the the starting point. So you have two points that you shouldn't confuse. You have the starting point, which is Ras al Naura, okay, and mm -hmm. Tekhelit is the other rock that is giving that that it's like an island that is giving full effect or not. Like in the same situation, like you want with with the with the uh, with the uh, Greek islands and. Uh, and the, the the Turkish maritime borders, course, like yeah. like a, a, a Castel Rizzo, should it give full full, full effect? No effect should you consider <laughs> or not? Because you're losing so much square kilometers by taking into consideration Castel Rizzo. This is like not even Castel Rizzo. This is like just a rock that is being full, giving full effect so that it's distorting the map, the, the, distorting the the, the, uh, the maritime borders exactly. Yeah. So uh, uh, so the Nakura is because how should you go like because you need to take the uh, how how they say the how the 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 borders how they go like uh, how to explain it in in english but uh, but basically uh, this is the problem there are two different problems a starting point and the effect of the island i got it which are, yes. uh, which are like two two different rocks yeah I think uh, well, I just it's not going to be it's not, it's not going to be easy to solve these conflicts. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's let me 
let me continue yeah, it, to my presentation. Yeah. Uh, three, and, three. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, sorry. Go ahead, time. Nadim. Yeah, we're because we're running out of time. I think we no, should no, of course, no. I, 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 well, yeah. I said the right thing. It's not easy to serve the conflicts if you, you know, the border conflicts are very. You know, the the wilayat of Beirut used to extend all the way to Akka. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm. I, I would like to tell something about if the, uh, if uh, if a um, uh, suitable uh, solution can be taken uh, uh, into action. For example, uh, in such a case, uh, all hands also we know that uh, the problem in uh, Israel to develop the uh, fields and. Uh, maybe find some investors to uh, new bidding uh, mid, uh, new bidding rounds uh, for the exploration new exploration fields uh, is to find the suitable huge market uh, hence the economics and development of the fields are uh, directly connected with uh, with to find the market hence uh, we know the leviathan and the biggest tamar uh, such fields in the region of israel are uh, all dry gas fields but I have to mention that this the small uh, this small uh, Karish and Northern Karish uh, fields are uh, gas and condensate fields. Maybe uh, there may be other opportunities to develop the fields. Maybe you can uh, re-inject the gas, make more condensate, condensate. But we have to know the uh, petrof petrophysical uh, data of that fields to be able to uh, give a most uh, more uh, coherent. Uh, uh, development projection uh, but anyway uh, there there are some opportunities to make these uh, to link these gas uh, to uh, send directly to Turkey which is the greatest market in the region and maybe uh, before solving some situations may, maybe solving some uh, conflicts in the region uh, these uh, some uh, making gas into production and uh, gaining money can solve uh, uh, can make us solve the uh, problems uh, more easily in the future um, however for example uh, we are not sure about uh, these blocks to be uh, discovered anything here uh, i would like to show another picture here you see this, these are the uh, for, for the further expectations for Lebanon offshore for example we are not sure about the solution uh, now, uh, new well uh, at the block uh, nine. Uh, we give uh, around one year to complete this well and uh, to get the results and the testing results uh, at the end of uh, 2021. Uh, if no discovery, then we have to wait minimum uh, for two years. As this is, for example, nearly all the investors uh, who are interested in the region in the Lebanon offshore are waiting for the. Uh, results of the wells uh, uh, and in these conditions while the corona effect the pandemic effect is uh, continuing uh, the investors will not be interested in the in uh, to continue uh, or to give bids for the new blocks uh, if we get a discovery uh, i think the lebanon may be able to activate the second licensing round and uh this this is going to be started at the uh 2022 and minimum one year we give uh to finalize the licensing round and then uh again new wells and new discoveries have to be started i think uh it's it's going to be minimum two years and it's going to be start at 2023 uh in 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 a commercial discovery and this is this will be a very good news for the lebanon side and uh, I think the activation of the second licensing round will be uh, easier. And then, of course, uh, in a commercial discovery, uh, appraisal was, uh, has to be started, uh, sales routes has to be uh, analyzed, uh, how to develop the commercial discoveries have to be uh, finalized. And uh, for, example, for example, the finance side, technology side, logistics, economics, prices, agreements, and the conflicts also has to be solved 
uh, before taking the FID, final investment decision. Uh, this period, uh, I can give minimum five, year, five years to develop this field and uh, get the first gas sales. And the first gas uh, can be if, uh, if uh, Total consortium can find a, a commercial discovery in the field. Uh, in the best case, the gas sales will be around 2027. But uh, I have to mention again, again the solution. Uh, solution if uh, maybe if there is not uh, a solution on the table, uh, then uh, maybe the solution may affect the as I mentioned the the first well. And also, uh, although, for example, let's assume that uh, through all the pressures, uh, total consortium handle all the pressures and uh, continue to drill the first well and make a commercial discovery, then uh, it's not easy to develop completely the field. Uh, there may be lots of new uh, conflicts. And uh, in such a case, maybe the appraisal and the uh, field development stage may be uh, taken up to 10 years. Uh, not five years and this may change all the dynamics in the region and so, and of course for example in uh, all the fields uh, that all the huge fields that uh, that is planned to be uh, developed in the region has to find a market to sell the gas that's the that's one of the other most important uh, item to consider uh, for example maybe you can send from uh, as an LNG form but uh, as if the if the gas in this uh, in these fields or the expect gas are again the right gas, then you you cannot uh, commercially make uh, LNG options. Then you have to again use the pipeline gas, and the only huge market uh, around there is Turkey. Um, again, so uh, to sell the gas to Turkey again, uh, you we have to. Uh, deal with other uh, conflicts, other conflicts do, uh, around the Cyprus, you know. Uh, but uh, if we if we can uh, 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 handle the solution, then, uh, for example, uh, every every each party is going to gain. For example, with uh, for example, uh, uh, in his present in in her presentation, Laura said that. Uh, Lebanon has nothing to lose, but of course, I think Lebanon uh, has lots of to lose in the situation. Hence, uh, for example, uh, with gas sales, more economy, more, more development, more finance, education, health, security, and feasible environment for solutions and uh, more conflict uh, resolutions. And uh, lots of things can be changed in Lebanon also. And uh, we know that Lebanon has to deal with huge debts. There is no money in the in the budget. And uh, Iran, Iran, and some other uh, different countries has uh, making lots of uh, integration uh, in the inside dynamics of the country. I think uh, we will be able to see a stronger Lebanon uh, in such a case. That's why solution is very important. And uh, usually, the dynamics in the world uh, is not uh, go further. Uh, with the uh, international laws, as I mentioned, the international international laws usually uh, cannot solve uh, nearly all the all the dynamics. Or, uh, for example, um, um, our uh, Turkish agreement with the lead side. Okay, uh, uh, we have our fair, but uh, but for example, the Greek also has done an uh, an agreement uh, with Egypt. Um, we don't accept this, and international laws cannot make anything uh, in these uh, options, which means uh, the stronger party uh, will make uh, its uh, its roots uh, in the solution side. So uh, I think uh, maybe uh, maybe while while coming this map, uh, I'm not sure I'm not a, a maritime lawyer, but for example maybe. Uh, we have to check uh, the most available and uh, most feasible, most acceptable options through this region, and uh, try to uh, try to complete, the, uh, try to finalize uh, these peace talks and uh, uh, develop and uh, continue to exploration activities in Lebanon side and develop the fields as soon as possible. Thanks very much.
Thank you very much, Osan, uh, for this technical overview. Very helpful also to have the visual in front of us. Um, uh, I realize that we're just over time, actually, by five, six minutes. And uh, I don't know if our guests have other arrangements or commitments, but uh, I think we should be wrapping up uh, slowly, um, even though we have quite a lot of questions in the comments in Kahir, I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we have o to- Osan, we have do to... you have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think there are lots of questions, as I see from the uh, from the uh, comments part. I think we can go uh, through those questions. It's going to be better. Yeah, maybe just pick a few of them and go through them quickly in the, re in the interests of time. Um, one question for Lori is: um, Lebanon signed an EZ agreement with uh, Greek Cyprus, the so-called Republic of Cyprus but it hasn't ratified this in the parliament. Why? And do you think it will in the future? Uh, so, well, thank God it wasn't ratified. I think it wasn't the, <laughs> it benefited Lebanon because I don't, I, that, uh, at the, uh, with all the uh, with all these uh, new data that is coming up with the new research that is coming up like i don't think like at least what was in that like point one as being a direction to where it could be like the uh, the borders uh, was not recognized officially that would have made lebanon's position more difficult today so but the, the incentive uh, why wasn't that uh, uh, ratified so there are actually uh, two uh, uh, if you want uh, two answers to that one is that at that time in 2007, there was a big uh, a division among the political class in Lebanon. And this came after like, you know, in 2005, after the assassination of uh, Prime Minister Rafi Hariri. And the situation in the country was very div uh, divisive. And he, the, the speaker of the parliament was close, most of the time was closing the parliament and the parliament was in, not in session. And the government at some point was considered to be not representative because it didn't have all the uh, uh, parties into it. So that, there was an pol internal political issue that made this uh, agreement not to be ratified. And the other issue is like there were kind of pressure from the Turkish uh, on the Lebanese not to uh, sign the EZ with, uh, with Cyprus. And you know the whole story. I'm not here to tell you the story. And so these were like the kind of two issues why, or two reasons why this agreement was not uh, ratified between uh, Lebanon and uh, Cyprus. Uh, going forward, actually, this is an issue that should be uh, tackled because if Lebanon and Israel, because Lebanon and Cyprus are working on a unitization agreement uh, in case of common reservoirs and the need to, uh, to share these re resources. But to do a unitization agreement, you need borders, right? So at one point, they will have to uh, go back and sit and negotiate their, uh, their uh, exclusive economic zone again uh, so that they would be able to do uh, to proceed with unitization. And in case there are other feeds like Block 5, for, in for instance, Block 5 might have like common reservoirs between Lebanon and Cyprus. So it's a continuing process. But what I want to say on uh, Ogzan's uh, presentation it's like it's a long process for Lebanon and we are out of the competition actually with, with other countries because we don't have discoveries yet. And the, uh, the future of oil and gas is some kind uncertain. People are talking about peak demand, even for gas, uh, etc. So we don't have a lot of time, but we're very behind and we, we do have a lot of problems. Uh, uh, so even if we do have a discovery, let's say by pl block in block nine by Total, who's the market for that? The local market is not ready. We don't have the power pl plants on gas that will yeah. take the the gas, right? So and for going outside the region, outside Lebanon, it is a whole political geopolitical situation because we don't talk to the Israelis. We have a very uh, very. Uh, 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 like I don't know, uh, uh, not clear relations with the with Syria. Are we enemies? Are we friends with Syria? It depends whom you're talking to. Nadim would say something. My I might say something. Another person, my husband, might say something else. So it's not very clear. So how are we going to take this gas outside of Lebanon? 
is it is LNG a possibility? But it can. How much we're going to find gas to be able to have these LNG processes and and be it, uh, be able to take this gas outside? And as I have learned now from Oscar, it depends on the nature of the gas. Is it dry? Is it not dry? So that you can easily transform it to LNG. So all of this makes it really difficult for Lebanon, even if it has discoveries, to make to monetize it, to make to make money out of it. So that's why, even though I come from an oil and gas uh, 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 sector, I always say for Lebanon, they need to work on their politics, they need to work on their economy, they need to work on their renewable, and continue working on oil and gas, but not rely and put all their eggs into the oil and gas basket, because it's a very long process with, more, uh, with difficulties, not political, geopolitical, and financial, and economic, and uh, market-wise, etc. Yeah, of course, of course. Thank you, thank you, thank you Laurie. Um, another question, and this is regarding for the you know greater benefit of the region as well. So, in case of emergencies or environmental disasters, um, you know these things do not recognize borders between two adjacent countries, and an event that occurs on one side of the border can spread out to the other. Uh, the question is, how do you plan to coordinate such actions with Israel, if, like an oil spill or an environmental uh, accident? Uh, so it is, uh, the, the, there, is uh, the, there is like a, a planning around these environmental risks and how to mitigate them. And basically, the Lebanon is col collaborating with the EU and with Cyprus. Uh, on these issues. Uh, how are they going to deal with this issue with, uh, with Israel? So because you know we don't recognize Israel, we don't uh, uh, we don't talk to the Israelis. Uh, so uh, anything that will happen, I think it will require the help of a third party. Cyprus being the closest, uh, so that could be one way of asking for them. I don't know much about. I know that there are doing plans on the environmental risks and mitigations, but I'm not very much aware of these issues. But I know that they were collaborating with the EU and putting a plan that is according to the EU's uh, uh, standards and uh, etc. But I don't know much what will happen. I guess uh, it will, uh, let's see when it happens. Hopefully it will not happen, uh, but uh, yeah. Let's see. Thank you for this. Uh, Osan, I will give the word to you if you have any final remarks or questions and then uh, maybe let's wrap up in the next few minutes. Yeah, uh, I think my kids are uh, making war in uh, in the backstage. Maybe they you can uh, hear the, their voice. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, as I told, as I listened here uh, to this conversation, uh, it seems uh, much more difficult to solve uh, the situation. And uh, however, for example, uh, and in addition, uh, I have to mention that, uh, for example, for only one well, uh, you can do, for example already also uh, Israel site uh, has mentioned that I will not leave uh, I will not leave total to to drill the first well maybe they can leave and total uh, by handling all the pressures can drill the first well but uh, the development phase uh, is much more uh, different than much more difficult as you have to uh, put lots of money uh, make lots of agreements uh, make investments in the offshore and in near all those in, in, uh, investments can be uh, collapsed for example with one uh, rov uh, remote operating vehicle uh, hits or uh, a ship uh, accidentally can hit the uh, facilities and uh, finish all the uh, collapse all the investments and any any offshore company or any international company uh, can make such uh, such an attempt uh, in such a uh, a conflicted area for example again this is the same situation in the southern uh, part of cyprus for example any international company cannot make anything uh, by neglecting turkey uh, although turkey has not done anything uh, in that region uh, maybe due to some accidents uh, all the investments can collapse uh, the same situation is in the field i think and in addition for example I don't, uh, I don't uh, think that Israel will uh, leave uh, some part of. Uh, you, there are two options, as uh, as I have showed uh, in my map also, and Allah showed us. 
the first one uh, is around two uh, uh, eight hundred and fifty uh, eight hundred and fifty thousand kilometer square area. The first line, maybe Israel may give a uh, half of the uh, half of the initial configured area to Lebanon, but uh, for the second site. Uh, which is coming to the northern Karish, I think Israel will not let such an option. And um, by the way, initially, uh, I couldn't understand the both sides' uh, uh, logic uh, by putting those lines uh, from here, from here, only 30 meters, I couldn't understand. Sure. But as Laurie told us again, uh, this is the negotiation table. Uh, you, you maximize your, your demand and they maximize their demand and you you come uh, uh, in a uh, fixed point in a middle point. I think the middle point is going to be around the, the first first area, and maybe uh, Israel may leave maybe uh, the seventy percent of the initial area, uh, those uh, eight hundred and fifty uh, thousand kilometers squares area. I mean, uh, maybe seventy percent or sixty percent Lebanon side, and maybe uh, solve the conflict hands. Uh, this this solution also uh, may help the Israel to develop uh, additional fields. Hence, for example, uh, with more gas in the region, uh, this means more interest to the region, uh, uh, easier and easier uh, and uh, cheaper to transport the gas uh, to to for example to the Turkish market. Uh, in such an option, Israel will also gain, uh, and the region also is going to gain. And uh, with higher income of the Lebanon, maybe Lebanon can solve uh, much more for much more inner side problems, and uh, uh, maybe some uh, conflicted issues like the Hezbollah and other uh, Iran's uh, integration and the Lebanon may decrease uh, with higher income. I think we have to see. Uh, we have to see all the sides, and uh, I hope I hope we can find a solution in to, into the region. Yeah, thank you very much for for, 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 uh, yes. for the speech and uh, descriptions. And also, I see there are lots of questions that we couldn't deal with. Uh, somehow, somehow we we have uh, answered, but. There are lots of questions we couldn't uh, complete it. Maybe if you have time, uh, um, Laura and Mr. Nedim can uh, quickly go on the question or go on the answers of these questions. Hence, uh, our uh, um, follow uh, also. Yeah, I, I took think, a note of these questions. Sorry, go ahead, Nedim. Yeah. Can I, if I can, you know, summarize? I'm looking at the questions. I think the uh, there is one. Can you hear me? There yeah, is yeah. one. Yes. There is one answer that will that can resolve a lot, a lot of them, which is that I believe in old-fashioned diplomacy. You get a credible, a credible arbiter, a credible mediator, who will go and have a nice glass of whiskey with all with both sides and come up with a reasonable solution that both both accept. If you want to. If you want to complicate the problem, you you send it to a committee, you know, like Soviet style, or you send it to an international court, or you try to link it to all the problems of the world before, you know, uh, before before it is resolved. So so th this is this is the simple the simple the simple way of looking at 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 the, at the problem. You either want to solve it or you want to complicate it and. That's yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nadim. Uh, I think there is one question, which is, uh, you know, everyone understands that there will have to be some compromise. Uh, this is, I think, one of those give or take questions. Like, would you be willing to give up the Prasad Naura question for more percent share at sea? I think the question is, are would you accept the Israeli position on the land border in return for more share at sea? Lori. Uh, look, uh, look. The uh, I think now today the Israeli problem is how to save Karish. They should they should make the compromise uh, to save Karish. Lebanon has a very strong uh, legal base based on UNCLO, and it's true that Israel does uh, this is not a signatory to UNCLO, but it does accept the uh, it does accept it as a customary law, and it has signed the Geneva 
uh, Geneva a, a Convention. So uh, therefore, Lebanon has a very strong uh, case. If it was the case that Lebanon went to arbitration or any other court and it didn't rely on the U.S. mediation, Lebanon would have won the case easily. But again, as the participant last week said, Israel does not like to go to court. It prefers to do bilateral meetings, uh, bilateral negotiations. So I think today Israel is in a position where they need to think how to save Karish. This should be their uh, problem. Uh, the, the problem is not Lebanese. The problem is Israeli. Uh, and they need to do the compromise. Okay. Uh, one question for you, uh, Osman. Uh, Turkey has a floating power generation unit uh, lent to Lebanon. Is it possible for Lebanon and Turkey to cooperate uh, in offshore energy as well? Uh, you, want, you want to repeat the question? Yeah, yeah, can you repeat the question? Please. Yeah, Turkey had lent a power gener a floating power generation unit to Lebanon. Um, do you think such cooperation and energy uh, can grow between the two countries? Yeah, maybe. Uh, why not? But uh, there are lots of other conflicts uh, to solve initially. I think um, maybe uh, before uh, before uh, making such an agreement with Turkey and Lebanon, maybe. Uh, Lebanon may accept the Northern Cyprus and uh, <laughs> and make ah, an easy. Yeah, ask that Cyprus. question to Lori. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, in such a case, uh, all the uh, all the equations may be solved e more easily. <laughs> that yes. that is a tricky question. That is a tricky question. So I guess like maybe first Israel. Like I I've seen like the new. Uh, I don't know if it's a proposal or it was just a study that the the maritime borders between uh, Turkey and uh, and uh, Israel, uh, which is a win-win for both. Uh, so, so, so I don't know. Like I don't know if you have presented any proposal to Lebanon uh, on how on how to do that. But I think this is a very uh, political, uh, very uh, serious political uh, diplomatic uh, uh, issue that. Uh, that Lebanon needs to, uh, uh, I think Lebanon needs to have clarity upon it. Like, how do they see their relations with Cyprus, with Northern Cyprus, with Turkey, etc. So it's part of the uh, clarity in foreign pol policy and uh, positioning Lebanon itself in the region with all these divisions that are happening in the East Med Gas Forum, uh, Turkey being outside the East Med Gas Forum, uh, should Lebanon sell gas to, if it finds gas to Turkey or be part of the East Med Gas Forum. So all of these are like the complications of uh, having gas in the region, I guess. Yes. Um, I think that's all the questions. Thank you very much, Lori. Do, also, Osan, do you have any final remarks, any questions remaining? No, thanks very much. All right, perfect. Nadim, um, thank you very much also for your comments. Anything you'd like to add? Thank you. No, well, for closing off. Very, very interesting. Thank you for holding it. I learned a lot. So, so did we. Uh, it's pleasure to have hosted you. Maybe we'll do another event, uh, if time permits, again to go into more of the some of the unanswered questions to go more into more detail around some of these. Um, yeah, we will look forward to uh, hosting you again. This has been a prominent discussion. Thank you for both of, for both of your contributions. Thank you. Awesome. Thank also, you thank you. Much. You're welcome. Thank so, you very much. That was very interesting. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. So uh, let's uh, finish the leave site. Thanks very much for the all followers. I'm finishing the uh, audience. <laughs>